we'll get started. All righty, and let me share my screen. Okay, um, so welcome everybody to hands-on session number 10. Woohoo! We made it to double digits in the hands-on building for the Journey Builder Bootcamp. Uh, today, we, are, we had a couple options. This, for the schedule, we had building content in Journeys, but since we had covered that a bit when we were building our um, abandoned cart journey, I thought we would go and do a different use case which is using Journeys um, and uh, Marketing Cloud to align the all subscribers database in uh, Salesforce CRM, excuse me, all subscribers database in Marketing Cloud with uh, the Salesforce contact or lead uh, records. So we'll dive into that. And just to give you a little bit of an overview of what we'll be getting our hands dirty in, um, We'll cover that in a second. Just want to cover upcoming sessions. Tomorrow, we've got a session on uh, journey building and higher education. Uh, a big focus on that is on the WhatsApp um, functionality, which was covered in an earlier session. This is going to actually see it working live in a higher ed client environment, plus some additional journey building there for Sufia is going to be covering that. Definitely recommend that session. And then we've got uh, three more sessions um, in, the, in the following uh, week and a half. Uh, we're looking forward to Matt Brulé's um, session on the journey building in the financial services space. Um, also the goals, advanced coding, QA testing, I think it's gonna be a very helpful session. And then Sandesh who had an earlier session um, in the journey bootcamp, which got pushed back a little bit due to his uh, obligations. He is going to show you his custom activity that he, that he built just for Journey Builder uh, and showcase that. And that's gonna be on the 29th. So definitely a mark your calendar. We've also got two more potential sessions that are gonna be added there as well, working through those. So uh, more to come on those. And then our, our hands-on sessions uh, next week, uh, definitely want to uh, sign up for this. The Sandash is gonna be having a builder build the wait until event functionality that uses a cloud page form handler to um, send that API call into Marketing Cloud for that um, wait until event to fire in Journey Builder. So a very cool session. The second session on, on October 30th, he's gonna have you help build a custom activity in Journey Builder, the one that he showcased on his 29th session. So definitely sign up if you're interested to be a hands-on builder for those two sessions. Those are gonna be incredible developer-focused, hands-on training uh, with Sandesh. And then last but not least, though there might be another hands-on session, we are earmarking 11 six session. We had a lot of positive feedback on Hunter's uh, demo of building and prompt builder. So we're gonna be doing a hands-on session where he's gonna have um, somebody build a build prompt, a, 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 an example, build a prompt builder use case, build a very complex prompt uh, very similar to what he showed. So uh, three great hands-on sessions coming, different topics, different areas there uh, to, to take a look at. So definitely um, consider those in the future. Um, okay, let's talk about our use case. Um, we've encountered this many times with our clients. So we've got the sales team or service team. Uh, they're in the Salesforce CRM environment. They're working their contacts or their leads. They might be taking those contacts or leads and dropping them into marketing campaigns that will trigger journeys. Uh, and are often find with those sales teams that are in the Salesforce platform, they're sending a client a special message through one of those campaigns. The client is waiting for that email in the end, but they never receive it. So they reach back to the sales team. It's like, I never received that email. And the sales team's like, I don't know, you know why is this not working? Why am I not sending? And they'll you know, constantly reach out to the marketing automation group to say, hey, I just sent, you know, I dropped this contact or lead in this campaign. They never got the email. You know, what's, what's the story here? Um, so there's really no way in Salesforce CRM to see that subscriber status in Marketing Cloud.
I think we won't be able to hear you. Uh, I think you are in mute. Thank you. Oh, yes. Sorry about that. So yes. I lost my phone connection there for a second. Better. Thank you, Samir. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so um, this is where I left off. So no way in marketing, no way in Salesforce CRM or Service Cloud are you able to see that subscriber status in Marketing Cloud. Um, like this use case we just described, typically sales will reach out to marketing automation and be like, on a case-by-case -case basis, uh, can you check, you know, why isn't this, you know, this person, I dropped them in the journey, why didn't they get the email? You know, that person will have to either run a, a query in Query Studio to find that out, or they might have to, uh, you know, manually check with all subscribers. So checking that is very manual on the marketing cloud side. And, you know, those databases really aren't aligned uh, to understand that. You, ideally in that, you know, in this use case, you would want Salesforce CRM to be the database of record for that subscriber. So, you know, you know that's the challenge there is aligning that Salesforce contact or lead database with the marketing cloud, uh, all subscribers database. So our solution, what are the things that we can uh, build out uh, today to help solve this? Sorry, I just want to, let me go back. Okay. Um, we want to, in Salesforce, you know, oftentimes you'll probably want to create a custom field in Salesforce that you can display that subscriber status. You'll probably want to populate that subscriber status from Marketing Cloud in bulk. We won't be covering that today. We're going to be sort of doing the ad hoc population of those. You, you might want to create an automation in Marketing Cloud to identify, you know, when those two databases are out of sync. So once that subscriber status is populated in Salesforce, you might want to check, okay, when something changes in Marketing Cloud, let's check to see if these two are out of sync. And then if they are out of sync, this is where Journey Builder comes in, where we can you know, update that field in Salesforce to, um, to get that, uh, to align that database and make sure that's current. So that's the steps that we're going to sort of go through today. Uh, the last one is there is a has opted out field, Boolean field typically. I think that's a standard record on contacts and, and possibly leads as well. You could also flag that and that can be helpful as well. So um, that's, the, that's the use case we'll be hopefully build as much as we can today on this session. And then Samir, we're going to right uh, after I stop sharing, we're going to um, have you um, Create you as a subscriber. Um, but before we do that, I thought, thank you, first of all, Samir, for volunteering, for being a hands-on builder today. Um, and can you just tell us a little bit about your background in Salesforce and Salesforce Marketing Club? I'm pretty new to Salesforce Marketing Cloud, but I'm uh, working as a Salesforce architect and uh, still learning. Uh, the learning journey is still continued. I uh, mostly work with sales, service, experience, non-profit, higher education, and uh, net zero cloud. So that's what uh, cloud I have worked upon. And uh, uh, bits and pieces, I have also worked on a little bit of service max and uh, you know, field service lightning. So that's all about me. And, uh, Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Appreciate that uh, that background. Okay, so let me um, let me get out of this document, and we're going to go into Marketing Cloud, and we are going to create Samir as the new user. So let's go into our setup. We're going to go to our users, go to our users tab under administration. Um, what I'd like to do when I'm creating a new user, well, in, at least in this environment, is um, I kind of like to pull up an existing user. So let me pull up myself as a user. Uh, just because the username, we want to align with the similar username syntax here. So using this at MC demo, sometimes I think um, when, you know, at least our experience, um, particularly when you're setting up users in Salesforce, uh, you want to have a different username for each environment because if you have the same username in multiple environments, that can sometimes throw a kink in the work. So let's just keep that up while we're, and we'll just make sure that we create a new user that's similar 
you know, syntax wise uh, there for Samir. So we're going to go back into that users and we are going to create a new user. So we've got Samir. And Samir, what's your last name? That is Barat, B A R A T H. Bravo Alpha, Romeo Alpha, Tango Hotel. B A R A T H. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's go grab Samir's um, email address, notification email address. Sometimes that resets. I'm going to pop that in there. So we're going to use the similar syntax. Um, that's mcdemo.com. Let's just double check to make sure that's similar. mcdemo.com using first name, last name. And for our temporary password, you know, we're not going to need to have you as an API user. Um, I'll just use capital P A S S. Again, P A S S W O R D one two three dollar sign. Capital P A S S W O R D one two three dollar sign. Let me just drop that in the channel. You'll be using that in a second. Dollar sign. And let's hit save. Okay, awesome. We've got Samir as a new user. Let's go back to our user menu. And then we need to do two things. We need to um, give Samir access to our business units. So we're going to select this tab. We're going to select manage business units. For today's session, we're just going to give you um, access to um, the Cervello main. That should be where we're going to be doing all of our work. And then, um, Sorry, that should be the default business unit. And I think you'd be good with partner main, but we'll keep you there. We've got a couple of business units here that I think we won't be using today. So let's save that. And then on the access side, um, we'll just make it simple today. I mean, this isn't best practices. We're just going to allow, um, we're going to give you admin access for the day and then we'll uh, reduce that down to just like a content builder. So we'll do marketing cloud administrator and regular administrator. And then I don't know if others have this similar scenario, but I, when I'm setting up users, I typically, when I'm setting up an admin, I'll go through and make all these check boxes, um, at least in our sandbox environment. And again, this is just a sandbox is recommended for um, use if you have a multi um, a multi um, you know, team member you know enterprise organization but just giving somebody quick and full access uh, sometimes that seems to uh, be the most successful path I don't know if others have any uh, stuff on that but, um, I'm sorry let me let me set that password to you. You're, and then Samir, let me. Voice is breaking actually. I'm not sure is it for me or for everyone. I'm not sure. Like like it's it's uh, you know breaking in between. Yeah, okay. me yeah, yeah. All right. Is it is it everybody else as well? I could probably call back in. Yes, it's breaking. Okay, let me just call right back in. Sorry. Not completely breaking, but yeah, breaking in between. You know, sometime it is low, sometime it is okay. Sometimes we won't even really understand. What say. Okay, I'm going to talk for a little bit. How's this audio? Is this a little bit better? Is it less choppy? I think now it's fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Appreciate that. 
Okay, so uh, Samir, let's see your, let me, let me just um, let's go back to those users and let's get your username and I will drop that in the channel as well. So your user and let me send you the um, URL for Marketing Cloud, which is a little bit different. Um, I am going to stop sharing. And, ooh, I might not have been sharing at all. Um, let me uh, make sure that you are the um, a co-host. And And then Samir, if you want to share your screen, we will um, have you walk through the process of logging into Marketing Cloud. Excellent. Our favorite screen. It's a good sign. Good first step. And we do have several um, experts on the call. Ogo recently, and Maggie is on as well to help uh, coach um, Samir through this. I think he'll get an email, be able to put in that code, and then we'll have to do some authentication with the Salesforce app. So we've got other um, experts on the call to help uh, the next steps. Okay, so do you have a Salesforce authenticator? They're very thorough with their their access. Okay. 
And Samir, you can, if you want to stop share, screen sharing, if you want to keep that information private, that's uh, fine as well. Okay, am I am I sharing my screen now as well, or still it is? No, you're still you're still sharing it. Not getting that option, I think. Uh, I think if you scroll to the top of your screen, it'll um, it, the menu will appear. Um, okay. let me let me okay. share my so screen. Second is being. I'm so sorry. No, I, I know <laughs> so, <laughs> Zoom can be can be unique there. Um, all right, and while you're working on that, let me share my screen, and we're just going to talk about this use case a little bit more. Uh, just uh, Samir, let us know if um, if you don't have any problems logging, you should be good to go there. And then we're just going to set up the situation in Sales Cloud, and then we're going to have you share in a sec. Okay, let's talk about this scenario. So I've got our Salesforce CRM environment. I'm that salesperson who's working with, uh, you know, this is contact in Consent Zyder. Um, and, you know, I sent this contact to Journey and they didn't, um, you know, they didn't receive the email. So this is the one that I would reach out to marketing automation, they would, you know, search for that, you know, that contact ID and all subscribers. And, you know, that lo and behold, this subscriber is unsubscribed. Um, but back in the Salesforce CRM environment, there's really no way to see, you know, to see that. Um, to sort of take a, a, a couple of steps, you know, um, faster for this hands-on session, we built this uh, custom field. It's super easy to do that. You know, in in our sandbox environment, you would need to work with your corresponding uh, Salesforce team in order to you know make sure that that's you know added correctly on the contact or the lead object. But you know, straightforward on our end. Uh, so this is that field, this email delivery status field that we're going to want uh, that would be kind of handy if we um, if we pop populated this. For, um, for sales so that they could, if they have that situation where, hey, this person didn't receive the email, they could scroll down to this field and know uh, what marketing cloud currently has for that status. So in this case, if it was unsubscribed, uh, they could you know, reach out to that contact and say, yeah, you, you looks like you've unsubscribed. Uh, they, you know, your organization might have a resubscribe link on an email uh, where they could say, you know, navigate back to, you know, the last email you received and click on your preferences, and then that should, you know, resolve that. So that's our goal here is to use Marketing Cloud to, you know, not only to populate this field, but to use Marketing Cloud to create an automation and a journey that maintains that status field. As, as we all know, I, all subscribers is a living and breathing database that changes over time. So what I'm going to do... Um, is I'm going to drop this contact in the chat and let me stop sharing. Um, so what we're going to do, um, Samir, if you want to share, we'll go into Marketing Cloud and we're just going to build a quick and simple journey to populate the field, um, this email delivery status field 
for this particular contact to get something populated there. So we're going to replicate that that step, which would be to populate, you know, you, pop, you want to populate all uh, contacts and leads with that value. Yes, that's a good point, Maggie. What about the do not email field in Salesforce? Is that only for Salesforce CRM emails? Yes, that's a great call out. Uh, the has opted out email, I think that's the API name of that. We will take a look at that as well if we have time. It depends on your use case. You could, you could populate all subscribers, so excuse me, that email delivery status field. And then if that, um, you know, that status is unsubscribed, you could also um, populate and flag that uh, email field in sales cloud as well. So great call out. Um, okay, so um, in fact, let's do that. We'll, we'll build that in, Maggie, great call out. Okay, great. So Samir, you are in Marketing Cloud, fantastic. So what we're gonna do is let's go to Journey Builder. We're gonna start building out this journey that's going to A, populate that email to the delivery status field and B, flag the email opted out, the has opted out email field as well if that status is unsubscribed. So if we go um, in your top uh, navigation, there is those, you see those icons the uh, seventh one over is Journey Builder, or the eighth one over, yeah, let's click in there, we'll click into Journey Builder. Samir, is this your first Journey Build? Yes. I, that's super exciting, amazing, fantastic. All right, so we are going to create a new journey in the upper right-hand corner. Welcome to Journey Builder. So for this, you see it's got a couple options here. We typically will use multi-step. Uh, we've covered the single send and the transactional send. If you want more information on those, check out uh, Yosina's uh, first two sessions on Journey Builder in this bootcamp. She covers that. So let's, we'll select create there, that blue button there on the bottom. So Samir, I don't know if you see that blue button there. I don't know if we see your mouse. In it. There we go. Yep, perfect. Okay. So is Excellent. Multi-step, right? Yep, you're all set. Okay. Now, I'm kind of nerdy about this, but I typically like to to, to name that journey as soon as you start it out with. So you see where it says um, "New Journey Dash October 16, 2024" at the top. Um, yeah, a little bit, yeah, right there. If you click on that pen pull. Um, so let's just name this, um, we'll call it email delivery status update. Okay, cool. Um, and then um, we'll just, if you click out of that or hit return, I think that will save it for you. Okay, fantastic. And now in the upper right hand corner, there is a save button, um, which is right next to there's a little, yep, let's click there. Now when this saves, a little green bar is gonna appear. If you click on that organize there, it's really quick and kind of interesting. Okay, this is how you can drop it into a folder, which is hand handy. So under that hands-on um, folder there on the left, it's the only one with it, oh, it's the one in the middle that has a carrot on it. Let's see, yep, and if you open up that folder, there is a Journey Builder Bootcamp folder. So if you just click on that folder itself. Yep, uh, right, all right. Um, it's, it's sort of like in the middle. There you go. We'll just click on that folder. And we'll just use the top folder, yep. And then we'll hit save. Okay, fantastic. Now we've got this in the right location, we've got it named, perfect. Okay, so the first, um, what we're gonna be using for this scenario, just to populate these records, is we're gonna have a list of all these contacts or leads. Um, 
and we'll probably use a query to create that. But for now, we're probably going to just you know create it manually for this one record. So we're probably going to use a data extension entry source over there on the left. So you can see on the entry sources, the green circles. In the second row, there's a data extension um, circle. Over there on the left, um, you see that under, yep, if you, if right, yep, the, yeah, if you pull that and you drop into the circle over there on the canvas, excellent. So that's the data extension that we're going to look to um, use to feed the who's going to be entering in this journey. Um, now we're going to add two activities. Um, I think, yeah, we're probably going to need two separate activities here. So to update a um, object in the Salesforce CRM environment, there's a bunch of different tools to do that. So in your left in your journey menu, those activities, if you scroll down to the bottom. Yep, keep going. Perfect. So we're going to use the object activity um, blue box there at the bottom left hand corner. Let's drag one of those up and you'll want to drag it in um, after the date extension circle. Perfect. And then if you hover over that object activity, right where the name object activity is, yep, if you hit that pencil, let's uh, say, let's name this uh, email delivery status update. And now we're going to want to bring another one of those object activities, and we're going to bring that over as well. And we'll add it right after it. And let's um, click on that pencil. And we're going to call this um, email opt out update. Perfect. Let's hit save. You've done some great work here. Don't wanna, don't wanna um, lose that. And again, it depends on how you build journeys. Sometimes it's helpful just to lay out the canvas before you start pulling in you know, all those different data points so you can visualize it. Um, and then, so, so like what Maggie's suggestion, uh, what we'll wanna do is we're gonna want to update that um, email opt out um, um, st you know, field, but only for those uh, records, those contacts that have an unsubscribed status. So to change, to sort of ask that question in Journey Builder, there's a tool, uh, there's an activity called a decision split. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit in this orange section, See in the top, yep, we're going to drag that decision split between the two object activities, and that's going to help make that decision there for us. Okay, fantastic. Let's hit save one more time. The reason why I've been saving is that for all those journey builders out there, uh, it, it, journey builder can, I don't like it's sort of, it can time out where it's your, um, the work that you're actually doing can't be saved. So it's often good to just save it as you're working through this. And we're going to configure that decision split once we have our date extension set. But basically, that looks like a pretty good um, you know, orientation of what we're looking to do. So as someone comes into the journey, we're going to update those email delivery statuses because they have been designated that their status is out of sync. Um, and then after they do the update of that email delivery status, um, we're going to have that question there that says, hey, is this status unsubscribed? If it is, then we're going to update one more update. We're going to update that um, has opted out field to, um, to you know, check the Boolean field on that as well. And again, it all depends on your environment. Uh, just add a little bit more complexity there. Um, one other thing, um, Samir, 
on both of those wait steps at the end, you see how they say one day. If you click into those, let's change those to one minute um, because they can, it can be helpful if you're doing your testing to have that be a little bit faster than, um, than one day. So you don't have to, you know, your subscriber isn't stuck in here uh, as you're working through that. We'll change both of those to perfect. Okay, excellent, fantastic. Nice job building your first journey. Um, all right, so that's just the shell. Now to do everything that we need to do here, we need to create our data extension. Again, we're just testing out this functionality, so we're gonna manually create this data extension. Um, and, uh, and that should give us what we need to, uh, to, to make this update. So, um, Samir, if you can duplicate this browser tab, your, your tab up at the top, uh, we're gonna create another tab within Marketing Cloud to do that data extension itself. Got a question here. It's quiet in here. Are you all done? Oh, that's the, that's the uh, AI note taker. <laughs> Sorry. Um, hopefully it's not too quiet in here. I, I've noticed that with the AI note takers, they're not hearing my voice or our voices. Okay, so we're gonna go to, uh, uh, we're gonna click on that upper left-hand corner. There's a little blue cloud right next to Journey Builder. That's gonna take you back to the main menu. And then under um, that first icon, Email Studio. Yep, we're gonna click on that email uh, right there. This is going to give us an ability to create uh, different date extensions for our test use case. Okay, now in that uh, on that same line as that blue cloud in the email, there's a subscriber tab um, a little further up. Yep. So we'll click, and then you want to click down. There's a data extension um, section. It's about the fifth item. Yep. Click in there. And then over there on the left, we're gonna open up that little plus sign to the left of data extensions in your uh, menu there all, all the way on the left. So if you go to the left, there's a little menu. Yeah, there you go. If you click that plus sign, perfect. And then if you scroll down, there's a little bit like um, a third of the way down, there's a hands-on folder. Um, so if you scroll up a little bit, um, yeah, I see that hands-on. We wanna click the plus, yeah, there we go, that plus sign. We're just going into our you know, folders here. And then let's click on the Journey Builder Bootcamp folder. We'll just click on the folder itself. It's like the, the fifth one down. Yeah, we'll just click on that folder. Excellent. All right, so let's create some data. Let's create a data extension here. Yep, perfect. We'll select a standard data extension. Um, for the name, let's go back to our journey. Let's copy the name from the journey. Just to keep the naming conventions similar. And what I kind of like pet peeve on data extensions, uh, Samir, if you can add an underscore between the email delivery, so there's no spaces, it makes your data, your queries simpler if whenever you're creating a data extension, there's no spaces. Uh, underscores will help with that. Because um, of time, we won't fill out the description. We will want to make this a sendable data extension. So in that checkbox down at the bottom, it's sendable because we are sending it, essentially we're sending it in Journey Builder, even though we're not emailing. And then we'll click next. We're not gonna really worry about data retention settings. I think this has been covered before, so we'll move on to the next step. Something for you to consider for sure in your environment. Okay, so we only really need two fields here for this update. We need the subscriber key or that contact ID for 
uh, who's making that, you know, what, what contact or lead we're making that update to. And then we need this, the status field uh, as well. So let's put in subscriber key here. If you wanted to do subscriber key, all one word. If no questions, uh, some Samir, if you're talking, I think you're breaking up a little bit. Um, could you enter in subscriber, subscriber key there? Perfect. Awesome. Okay, excellent. And um, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll have that without a space as well. Another, another, you know, good to do when you're creating fields. And then you can enter status. Okay. Um, both of those being text fields makes sense. Um, the subscriber key is, so we'll want that to be text. Text definitely works there. Um, so well, what this field will be populated status, uh, there are five statuses in Marketing Cloud. There's unsubscribed, there's active, there's held, there's bounced, and then there's deleted, which never really gets used much. Um, but all of those are within 50 fields, 50 uh, length of 50, so text works. Same thing for that subscriber key. It is a CRM field, so we know that's about 18 characters, so 50 covers it. Um, you might want to select um, the primary key for the subscriber key, just that might help with um, that not being uh, duplicated. So in that same row of subscriber key on that data extension, if you want to check that box under primary key, We'll want these fields are required, right? So if, if you had fields in the state extension that didn't really necessarily need, you could check the nullable box, but these are both required in order for this to work. Um, and then the send relationship there in the bottom, we're gonna wanna use subscriber key. So if you click on that um, arrow, it should, there we go. We'll select subscriber key and then we'll hit create. Nicely done, Samir. Build in date extensions. Excellent, excellent. Um, all right, now we can do a import into these date extensions. Um, we could do this manually, but I kind of want to do it through a CSV. So, Samir, do you have Excel? Yes, I do have. Let's let's pull up Excel. And we're going to create a basic CSV to upload fields into this data extension, upload records into this data extension. How do I find CSV? You know, if that's okay. What we'll do is we're going to just manually, this should be pretty easy. So if, if, um, if you go to the blue cloud in the upper left-hand corner, And let's go over to Audience Builder. Um, yep, over, yep. And then we'll hit Contact Builder. You um, can't enter, uh, manually enter records in the, the path we were doing, uh, creating a data extension through Email Studio. You can in Contact Builder, so we're using a different way to get to that data extension. So at the very top, there's a data extension tab. It's a data extensions. So at the very top, um, yep, in the center of that, uh, a center of your screen at the top, uh, there's a couple of um, tabs. It says all contact data source. Yes, if you click on data extensions, fantastic. Now on the left, we're gonna, yeah, we can hit get started. On the left, we're gonna wanna open up the carrot for data extensions. Yeah. And we're going to go to that hands-on folder. So it's a little further up. There it is. And then we're going to go to that journey builder bootcamp. 
And we want to click on the Journey Builder Bootcamp. Yeah. And then there's your date extension. Click there. And you can just click, yep, right there on perfect. And let's go to the records tab. So there's a records tab just to the right of the name. Uh, yep, uh, there's a, um, a little further up. There we go, perfect on that records tab. If we click there, and then over there on the right, we can add a record. So, yep, we'll click there. Now, the, let's put in the first contact ID that I sent you, which begins, ends in C-L-N-I-A-E uh, in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry, if you want to copy that from the chat itself, the one that, um, the one that I sent you at 828, we're going to want to use that entire subscriber key there. Perfect. Uh, that, that's okay. That, that one's fine. We'll go with that one first. Now, this is, we wanted to add two different uh, subscribers in here. So this one is we're going to designate as, as uh, active. So if you go to the status field, let's uh, type in active here. And it's lowercase uh, active. Not, it's not, not really, it doesn't really matter, but we'll just keep that aligned. Okay, perfect. We'll hit save, upper right hand corner. Now we're going to want to add one more. We're going to add one more record. Now, earlier in the chat, there was another contact um, that ended with C-L-N-I-A-E, the one that I dropped in around 828 in the chat. Perfect. That one is unsubscribed. So you're going to want to put, uh, it's all one word, unsubscribed with a D. Perfect. I'll hit save. Excellent, excellent, Samir. Creating a data extension, populating data. Awesome, awesome. All right, that's fantastic. Let's go back to our journey tab in our browser. All right, now we've got this data extension. Uh, let's just do a quick refresh of this screen. Sometimes when you leave Journey Builder, so if you, um, if you do a browser refresh, yeah, sometimes it helps. Sometimes, like I said, it can time out. So we could do this, be doing all this work in Journey Builder, but it's actually not keeping it. So sometimes it's helpful just to refresh that. To, to um, It should keep you in your same journey. Excellent. So let's click on that date extension. We're going to select the date extension that you created. Yep, so hands on, Journey Builder Bootcamp. And then, yep, and it ditched, it's in that folder, yep, correct. And email delivery status update, there it is. And it's got those two records, you can see that, excellent. Oh, that might be the population of the fields, but we'll hit summary. And we don't need to do any filtering, so we can hit done there. All right, um, now let's hit the schedule button down there at the bottom. We're gonna hook this up probably in a future session to an automation, but for our cases today, let's select the run once uh, option and hit select. And then uh, on that one time schedule, hit edit. And on activation, that makes sense. It, you can do it by a specific date and time. So that is the default. We'll just keep that. And we'll hit done. Let's hit save. All right, excellent, nice work. Um, now we're gonna configure that email delivery status uh, activity. So we'll click in there. This gives you the ability to update any object. So let's click, let's search for a, con in the search bar, let's search for contact. And if you hit return, there you go. And then, yep, we'll select contact and next. We are going to do a simple update. There you go. 
it is going to process in the journey that uh, the process person in the journey. Now, because we had designated the contact ID as the subscriber key, that's the person. Simple, simple way to do this. You could also do a find and update, it's a little bit more of steps, but we're gonna stick with the simple update for this one. And we'll hit next. And then we need to scroll down to the email delivery status field. It should be in alphabetical order. So there's quite a few uh, records there or fields, but if you scroll down to email delivery status and there it is. Now we're going to, over there on the right, we're gonna be populating the, the value that's associated with this record. Uh, and then over there on the right, you've got two options, contact data, which is the data that's not necessarily tied to the record. You select the journey data. So if you unclick that for a sec, yep, and select journey data, and then click on the trigger. There you go. And then select status, right? That is the stat. If you click on that, there it goes. It populates that handlebar code on the left. And we'll hit save. That is doing the update as we expected. We'll hit next. And that gives you the summary of the field that we're updating, the objects there on the left, contact, uh, status, and then overwrite, and let's hit done. And let's hit save. Okay, excellent. Um, we are at time. I actually have to jump to another meeting, um, but I wanted just to call up, first of all, Samir, excellent job here. Just wanna walk through the next steps that we would do. We would also do the same steps on that email opt-out update. We would do the same, find the same contact, but we would choose the has opted out field. That's the name for that email opt-out. Um, so follow the same steps there. In our decision split, we would check that the status field, if it equals unsubscribed, then it would go and do that path. If it didn't, it would just go down the other path. One other thing to note, as you notice, that the um, object activity, we had to select an object. So if this was gonna work for both contacts and leads, we would have to add another decision split at the very beginning that would say, if you know this subscriber begins with a 003, we know it's a contact, and then you'd have a contact path that would update those contact objects. If it equals a 00Q, you'd have separate object activities uh, to update the lead itself. So um, I got to run, um, Samir, excellent job today. Thank you so much for volunteering. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed, I would have loved to have seen this work in action. Maybe we'll have another hands-on session to you know, finish this end to end. Um, but any quick thoughts, Samir, before we hop off on the process so far? Oh, I, think, I think that's all. That's all I just wanted to ask because we have added two records. One start with 003 and one start with 00Q. So if we are selecting- Oh, contact, that's right. <laughs> so that one, that's I what, gave uh, you, right. I, yeah, so we sort of pre-built the data set to build in that logic. So yeah, great question there. So excellent. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Again, this will be on YouTube. Samir, do check out that YouTube channel. And thank you so much for volunteering on the spot. Uh, please join next week's session or tomorrow's session um, yeah. on journey building in higher ed. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.